hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's kojo joy from the joy with that and welcome to a new video where i teach you guys how to dodge and bend in photoshop using the curve adjustments layers so with that much ado please subscribe to my youtube channel if you're new here and if you're already here and you haven't turned on that notification button do turn on that notification button to receive every new video i drop here on my youtube channel so with that much ado let's just get right to what we have to do today First things first, you would create a curve. Sorry, we will create a group. We'll rename the subject dodge and burn DNB for short. And we'll create a curve adjustment, invert it, and duplicate it. So rename this to dodge and rename that to burn. So at the dodge, I'll reduce. Sorry, I'll send the curve up this way on the bend i'll bring the curve down this way right then i'll hold control on the keyboard or command on the keyboard select the bend and duplicate these two layers you already know how to duplicate your layers right i'll group these two and these two we'll rename this to corrective dodging and bending which in other words i will say micro dodging and burning or skin matching however we put it and this to contouring in the contouring i'll change the blending mode from normal to luminosity just so that i can just affect the light available on the skin not the saturation so with this whatever i do with the curve adjustments will affect a bit of the saturation too but with this it will just affect the light on the skin and not the saturation so to help me dodge and bend this better i would need a black and white layer and the black and white layer i use and i recommend everyone to use this tap on solid color choose 50 percent gray tap on ok change the blending mode color and you're good to go this will help you a lot so what further increase the density of the black and white by creating a curve adjustment and lowering the brightness on the image so i'll group these two and rename this to helper once in a while i add another adjustment which is the invert layer where wherever it's highlighted turns dark and wherever it's mostly a shadow area turns white so in between the shadow and the highlight which probably is the midtones look kind of grayish right so i'll turn this off and you get to see me use it later on whenever i'm dodging and bending i try to zoom in and zoom out and to prevent me from going in and back and trying to mess out on a particular um parts i have to dodge or bend i would probably duplicate this All right so i have two of these back to window go to arrange and two of vertical so i have two of these split up in my screen right so one will be the zoomed out version where i think this is how everyone will see it wherever i post the image and one will be the zoomed in version where i would correctively dodge and bend this image so i keep this that way so i come to my corrective dmb tap on the dodge pick my brush to make sure it's a soft brush a very soft brush soft round brush flow at two and we start dodging and bending so make sure to keep the flow on the skin right and try to soften some shadows if you don't really need them and soften some highlights too if you don't really need them so the trick to corrective dodging and bending is using dodge the dodge adjustment layer on the shadow right and the burn adjustment layer 
on the highlights so I pick the bear now I think I can see some of our blown highlights here and the I think here too so all I'm doing is trying to blend the flow of the shadow on the skin so before and after before and after you can see it's the side of the skin is a bit closer to let's say the side of the skin so that's why i have the zoomed out version i have the zoomed in version so that if i want to go in depth i just have to zoom in and correctively clear these so these lines are a bit distracting and this is what i'll do to them just dodge them out so for those looking at a quick way to dodging and burning i'm not sure this video is for you but if you're looking at learning how to correctly dodge and burn the images can matching your images using dodging and burning you can stick around and wait till you see the magic because i know this video is going to take a very long time but obviously i would fast forward some parts which i know is not necessary because the necessary parts are what i'm saying right now like dodging your shadows and showing you how i'm dodging the shadows so keep in mind my recorder doesn't really show how small my brushes my brush sizes so check this side you can see i normally increase and decrease my brush size so from five i can go to seven depending on where i want to brush i can go as low as four sometimes i can go as low as two or three depending on where i think i need to fix so don't be afraid to try new things because obviously <laughs> i used to doubt this micro dodging and bending process until i learned it myself and it has really really helped me in my retouching processes although it's a slow process where you'd have to take your time so before and after you can see this portion before with the lines and after that's with the lines taken off so it's a slow but sure process where you are sure that when you're done with micro dodging and burning the image will look as great as possible so trust the process always trust the process Even with a zoomed in version to see what you do if you're doing the right thing or you're doing the wrong thing. And 100% sure sometimes you do the wrong thing, but I end up doing the right thing, which doesn't make sense, right? So, with this kind of dodging and burning. I urge you to normally take your eye off the image once in a while. Look somewhere or strain your eyes, close your eyes, try looking at a particular image or another image, and come back to look at this. And you get to realize you think you've done a lot, but you have a whole lot of blemishes to fix. And it helps. So you don't have to sit behind your laptop for close to an hour or two dodging a bear trust me you end up doing something not worth it so once a while just look away close your eyes stretch open your eyes and look at your picture from another perspective from the viewer's eyes that's what they say so sometimes i look at my images thinking i'm a client okay that's how the picture looks like is it worth my money is it not worth my money 
I think I will fix it. It's also good to turn off your helper layer once a while to see how far you've gone with your audio jungle. Stuff you can fix dodging and bend. There are a whole lot of things you can do with dodging and bend. Straightening clothes using dodging and bending. Taking out blemishes using dodging and bending. And trust me, that is really magically fun, but it's really, really hectic. Personally, think to every great tree that right, there's a preference, or should I say preference, a referral image you're looking at. So I already have a particular image in my head how I want this image to look like, and I'm trying to perfect this to as close as it is. You get me? If I didn't have that image in mind, I think I'll just be doing whatever it is people do when they dodge and bend their images. So I do have something in mind I'm trying to achieve. And best believe I will get that result no matter how long it takes
audio jungle. Audio jungle. Well, this is where I think I'll introduce the invert. Okay. So whenever I bend on the invert, let's say I bend on this white, sorry, this dark layer, you could see it turns too white. So I'm trying to reduce the intensity of the highlight on the nose. Audio 
jungle.
So keeping in mind that with beauty everything has to be perfect that is why i'm really taking my time with this creative dodging and burning but i was just a normal portrait this is more beauty editorial and keyword being beauty i want to send this to perfection as possible Although no human being is perfect, you can see on the ground, you can reach out someone and the person will be so perfect you think that's how the person is in real life.
So apparently you can use dodging and burning, corrective dodging and burning to be precise, to fix lipsticks and lip glosses when you're retouching. think I have to take this off bend the sound in a bit and we're good to go For your portfolio pictures right always go for nude makeup and as such get a model with good skin where you don't really have to work much and if your makeup is right on point you don't really stress when you are editing so that being said this makeup was done by a very good friend of mine who just opened her shop, Service Makeover. So I'll leave her link down in the description for you guys to check her out. And also I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys to download um, my Dodging and Burning Action. Or better still, I created it to, you can just look how I did mine then you do yours and create an action for it so I think I'm okay with this creative dodging and burning but looking at these you could probably see the increase in saturation around some portions of the image right like let's say even the lipstick area when i turn it off less saturated when i turn it on more saturated so to fix this problem i just open up my hue and saturation layer i'll clip this on the dodge right then i'll target the reds because mostly the skin we are editing I in the reds so to reduce the saturation now reduce saturation of the reds and there you go it blends right in so when I turn it when I toggle it on and off you get to see how from saturated to desaturated and how it looks So as I was saying, if I toggle this on and off, the lips is a better example. If I toggle this on and off, you get to see the saturation over there. And even at this dent over here, when I toggle this off, you see the saturation bumps up. 
when I turn it back on, the saturation dials down. So this is how you get to fix your oversaturated part of your image when you are dodging them. I can just also target the yellows and reduce the saturation of the yellows to 12. I think 12 is okay for me. And I'm good to go. So I've correctively dodged and bend this image and I think I'm happy with the result we've gotten so far. So from here what I will do is go right into contouring. I'm contouring I think I need a black and white layer for that. I'll tap on this change the flow from 2 to 4 I need just one of these so I can send it as far as back as possible increase my brush size make sure it's a soft brush and contour the image think underneath the eye yeah, this way the chin this way that way the jawline these guys the lip so as you can see I'm just targeting the highlighted part and the image I forgot to touch this eyelash I'll go back to two um, sorry eyebrows not eyelash and we'll dodge the eyelash too. Bend the eyelash. I'm uh, making a lot of mistakes today. So back to four flow. Let's see. I think this is what I've done so far. Turn on the black and white. I think I'm good with this. Sign up a little bit. I'm going to bend. Let's zoom out. I think this portion and that portion. A bit of these guys. The nose area. Right underneath the eye the jawline on the side too
so let's see what we've done so far before and after before dodge and burn after dodge and burn i think i'll control the cheek a bit fix this a little bit too so soft in the shadows here on this side too I think a bit of this guy before and after before and after I think I would want to exaggerate the contouring a bit. So I'll create a new group layer. Contouring one. And then that's two curve adjustments. One screen and the other multiply. So double tap on this the screen option move we want the screen side to just affect the highlight so we move the slider away from the shadows and towards the highlight so i think 109 is okay hold out on the keyboard to split this into two to blend it very well and with the multiply which is the burn option move it away from the highlight so i think i'm good here to smoothen the transition i'll hold out and split this into two and send it towards the shadow area so when i'm done i'll mask the group go to image apply image and click ok without doing anything to the particular adjustment so when i tap this so when i toggle this between before and after you get to see the difference so it controls the image more and makes your highlights and shadows pop out the more so this is the before and this is the after that is with the contouring so before we conclude i would want to show you a quick before of all we did so far before and after before and after so thanks guys for watching this particular video i know it's been a long one but it's been educative for those who really didn't know about corrective dodging and bending and contouring the contour is also known as global dodge and bend or look how dodge and bending so if you've learned something new and you didn't get anything leave a comment down below i will get right to it and answer you with whatever answer i have for you to that question so if you haven't subscribed to my channel again please do and turn on that notification button so that you receive a new video when i drop it the very next time i am dropping the next video so, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.